You're unbelievable. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Hey class, sorry this video was posted so late. I uh, was having a lot of troubles posting this video before and then I went out of town and my wife and I got stuck in the mud at the salt flats, which was always a lot of fun. So uh, I didn't have a chance to make the video Friday afternoon like I was hoping to make it. Uh, but we have it now. So we're going to review a few things about balanced forces and then we're going to learn about how to solve our balanced force problems. The first thing we need to review is what are forces. A force is an interaction between two or more objects that results in a push or a pull. Forces are always going to be measured in Newtons or capital N. Now we learned about Newton's first law. It says that an object in motion will remain in motion with a constant velocity unless it's acted upon by an unbalanced force. And what does that mean in simple terms, and why do we care? Well, because it means if forces are balanced, then the object is going to have a constant velocity. And vice versa, if it's moving with a constant velocity, we know that all the forces acting on it are going to be balanced. That means uh, that's everything that's critical for this, is because when we learn how to use our, our balanced force problems, when we learn to solve those, we need to know that the forces are balanced. So if an object is moving at a constant velocity, that means we can use the techniques that we're going to learn in this video to, uh, to solve those problems. So what does a balanced force actually mean? It means that if we take all of the forces, all of them together and add them up, it would be equal to zero. The net force is zero. Or in another way, like the slide says here, that if we take all of the up forces, so if there's a lot of forces pushing up on an object, we add those up together and they should be equal to all of the down forces. And the same for our left and right forces, where all of the left forces that we have that are added up together are going to be equal to all of the right forces. From now on, we're just going to abbreviate this slide and just say up equals down and left equals right. Now, when we're dealing with our forces, a lot of times we're going to have forces that are not pointing in one specific direction, but they might be pointing to the right and up. In that regard, we're going to take just the components of that force because the components point in the one direction. What does that mean? Well, let's look at an example. Let's say that we have this black arrow which represents some force, like someone pulling one of those old-fashioned red wagons that, that everyone had as a kid. So you're pulling up and forward at the same time. Well, we can't really solve balanced force problems because this arrow isn't all pointing up, neither is it pointing all to the right, it's pointing both right and up. So what we can do is take this one arrow and break it down into the two components. This red arrow represents the horizontal component, or the X component, and the blue arrow represents the vertical component, or the Y component. So we can label it where F is just this total force for the black arrow, but down here we have Fx, and over here is Fy. So Fx is our X component, meaning all of this black arrow here, the amount of this black arrow that's pointing to the right is represented by this red arrow. And this blue arrow, Fy, represents how much up this force, the, the total force, is pointing. Now, this is always going to be a right triangle, and we can solve for right triangles using our SOHCAHTOA that we learned about last time. And to be able to use SOHCAHTOA, we need to remember these names, where here, this is the hypotenuse, the longest side of our right triangle. Down here at the bottom, which looks like this might be just slightly cut off on your screen, is called the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the angle. And this side over here is known as the opposite side because it's on the opposite side of the angle. Now, as long as we can remember those three names as well as the angle, then we can use these three useful ratios to help us solve those triangles and solve for those component forces. We have that the sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent or S equals OH, C equals AH, and T equals O over A. So, ka, toa. And that's how we remembered those from before. 
Let's do an example of Sokoto and see if we can figure out how to find the different components. Let's say that we're pulling up and to the right with 30 newtons and it's at a 27 degree angle. And we want to know what are these components that are pointing to the right and how much of this arrow is pointing up. So we draw the triangle. So we have our red arrow that represents the X component and the blue arrow represents that vertical or Y component. We label these sides and we label our known everything in the triangle. So we know that the F is 30, the angle is 27, FX is always going to be horizontal, and the FY is always going to be vertical. And then we use our co sine, cosine, or tangents to find our missing sides. So if we wanted to solve for the Y component, the blue, we look over here, we use sine of 27 equals our opposite over hypotenuse, multiply by 30 on both sides to get FY alone, and when we plug this into the calculator, we get 13.6 newtons is our y. So then we come over here and we write down 13.6 right next to fy. And then to solve for our fx, because fx is the adjacent side, we're going to use our cosine, where the cosine of the angle is equal to fx over the hypotenuse. Once again, we multiply by 30 on both sides to get fx all alone. And then we plug this into the calculator and that gives us the 26.7. And then we write that down, down here by the fx. And that way we can solve for the components of all of our forces. Now, to solve our balanced force problems, you just need to know four simple steps. And if you don't follow these four steps, it's impossible to solve the problem. So you really need to pay attention to these four steps and do every single step. Every time I ever have a student come and ask me a question, I'll ask them where they started and they just didn't do these four steps and that's why they get stumped. So the first thing we need to do is draw the force diagram, which we learned about last time is the dot and the arrows that represent all of our forces. The second thing is we're going to write down up equals down and left equals right, or U equals D and L equals R. And we're going to write it in such a way that we can leave some space to work underneath you know, like we're, we're going to draw the two columns so that we have a column for our up equals down and then we'll have a column for the left equals right. The third step is we identify all of our up, downs, lefts, and rights. And if we have any, um, any forces that are at an angle, we're going to identify the components of that force that's pointing to this side and pointing up. And then the last step is we just plug in all of our known values into the up equals down and left equals right to solve for our missing force components and then we solve. So let's try an example and see if we can make some sense out of this. Let's say that we have some weight that's hanging from two different strings. One of these strings is at a 70 degree angle and the other string is perfectly horizontal. And in the problem it tells us that this force over here, this string has a tension of 45 newtons this string here, we don't know the force, but we do know that it's 70 degrees. And now the question is asking, how much does this object weigh? This might seem like a pretty tough task at first because we're missing so much information. But let's just start from the very beginning of those four steps and see what we can figure out. So the first thing we do is draw that force diagram. This little mass here and this string together, this is going to be our total system. So we have these two different tension forces, one of them pointing at an angle and the other one pointing straight horizontal. Now I label it FT for tension, but I'm also going to add a little one right here to distinguish between the two different ropes that we have. So we're going to call this rope number one, and this is going to be rope two. So this is tension one, T1, and this is tension two, T2. And then the weight of the object, or the force of gravity, is what's pulling straight down. Now I notice that we have FT1 is pointing at an angle, so I can draw these two components here, where our FT1Y is going straight up and FT1X is going horizontal. Now your mind might start to kind of get all confused, and what are all these symbols? There's so many little things. All this is saying is, this is our tension from the first one pointing up, this is the tension from the first string that's pointing sideways. So we just add these little labels next to it to point out each little component of that force. 
And then I'm going to draw this over here in the corner to leave me space for the next steps that we need to do. So this is the same force diagram as before. Step two, we write down up equals down, left equals right. Step, and then we, step three, we write down what all of these are. So we identify that all of my up forces that are pointing up is just this one blue arrow. Well, wait, what about the black arrow and the blue arrow? The black's pointing up too, right? Isn't that two forces? No, remember, there's still only the one force. The tension one is pointing up, but it's the T1Y that is the up component. So we plug in the T1Y for our up, and then our weight, this FG, is the only arrow that's pointing down. So we plug that in for down. Our left forces is just this red arrow that's pointing straight to the left, which is our T1X. And then we have our FT2 that's pointing straight over. And it looks like we've got a little funky stuff going on right here. FT2, don't pay attention to that FT1Y right there. That's a typo. Now we just need to figure out what we know and don't know. Well, we were given that FT2 is 45, so I'll plug in 45 Newtons. And look, that already solves this half of our problem. Because we know that FT2 is 45 Newtons, we know that T1X is also 45 Newtons. So now let's draw our triangle and solve for the triangle to solve for our T1X. So we have our angle here where, or to solve for the Y, I mean. We have our T1X, which is the 45, is this side component. The T1Y is the vertical that we're trying to solve. And then this angle is 70 degrees. So we need to find FG, and we know that FG is equal to T1Y, this component over here. So we want to find our adjacent, I mean, excuse me, we know our adjacent, we want to find our opposite. So we're going to use our tangent because it involves the adjacent and the opposite sides. So we plug in tangent of 70 is equal to our T1Y divided by 45. And then we multiply by 45 on both sides. And then when we plug that into the calculator, we get 124 Newtons. Well, since FT1Y was equal to FG, we know that FG is 124, meaning the weight of that object was 124 Newtons. Now, I know that this went pretty fast. There were a lot of steps, and this is the first time you've ever seen it. So if you feel pretty confused, you might want to rewind this and watch it again to make sure you understand those steps. On the quiz that you're going to have next time in class, we won't have this exact problem, but you will have a problem on your bell ringer that is this type of problem. So make sure you know how to solve this problem here. So now, how big is this tension? Let's say that we just want to find this one for fun just to find this side. Well, there's two different ways of doing it. This way that I'm going to show you here involves our Sokotoa. We know that our top part here, our adjacent side was 45, and we want to find the hypotenuse, and the angle was 70 degrees. So I'm going to use my cosine to figure out my adjacent over hypotenuse. We plug those in, we multiply by the T1 on both sides, and then to get T1 alone, we have to divide by the cosine 70. And when we plug that into the calculator, we get 132 newtons. So the total force in this rope is 132 newtons. So once again, like I said, if you had trouble with that problem, you might want to rewind it and uh, watch it again. Um, you don't need to rewatch the whole video, but at least that one part to make sure you know how to do that on the test. Good luck.